if you crank up the peptide, you put yourself into a crash diet, you restrict calories because you're not hungry because the peptide dose is so high that it's crushing your appetite. Well, then we're going to have some problems. But there's a few other ways that muscle is actually protected from GLP-1s. And I talk about that inside my four-part video series. It's part two in there. You'll get it on the second day after you go share your email with me. You'll immediately get set, sent part one and then part two will come to you the next morning. So you can opt in for that and hear all about that. What else? Oh, no sustained weight loss. That is incorrect. So let's break this down. I've got some interesting information here and I will leave you with this. So the studies, even the big studies are showing that when people go off of these, they gain two thirds of their weight back. And some claims that I've seen online say it enables weight loss by decreasing muscle, not fat, which is bullshit and incorrect, which is devastating to health. That is incorrect. Another one was Ozempic makes you fatter. That is also incorrect. It does not. It actually induces visceral fat loss, which some studies have shown to be overall body mass index wise, much more significant to health outcomes, losing the visceral fat than the small amount of muscle that might be lost. I cannot deal with these untruths anymore. It's ridiculous. I don't know where people are getting these. I think they're getting their headlines from the Daily Mail. I don't know, but it's just factually incorrect. You do not end up fatter in the end. Now, if you don't protect your muscle and you keep eating garbage and you lose a ton of weight, yes, you're going to lose muscle mass. And then if you gain weight back, you're going to gain all fat back. And then you're going to be left in a much more metabolically busted state. However, we thought all of that until recently. This is very interesting. Patients keep weight off after stopping anti-obesity meds. This is a study. Most patients on the new class of anti-obesity medications kept off at least some of the weight up to a year after they stopped taking the medication, according to new data from Epic Research. And I will link this in the show notes so you can look at it. Why this matters is that it appears to contradict previous studies that have indicated patients on drugs such as GLP-1 agonists need to stay on them to keep the weight off. So this misnomer that you have to stay on them for life, it is incorrect. I'm hearing from doctors all over the place using these correctly that they're not finding that to be true. But Epic says, its findings from nearly 40,000 patient records across 236 health systems are consistent with those previous studies, but it said the new research offers a more nuanced picture of patient outcomes. They also included patients prescribed the drugs for diabetes and not just weight loss. The drug's long-term benefits appear more favorable when examined in this larger population and more granular data. Researchers looked at weight loss up to 12 months out from patients stopping the use of loraclutide or semaclutide. And basically what they found that nearly 20% of patients regained all the weight they had lost or more in the 12 months after stopping the drug. And another 26% regained more than a quarter of their original weight, but were short of the total regain. Okay. So there's some numbers that lines up more with the studies I've read about 20% of patients essentially maintain their weight loss, meaning they didn't regain or lose more than a quarter of their weight. So 20% had success and more than one in three patients continued to lose weight in the 12 months after stopping the drug because they use that time while they were on it to learn new lifestyle habits and implement new strategies to keep their body weight lower. So the point again is that it's nuanced. And I'm telling you, the doctors that I've been talking to who are using these peptides correctly are telling me that people are not regaining the weight so long as we use that time. Like I said, it gives the onus of control back to the patient and their metabolism is healing and regenerating. And so if folks use that time to implement new strategies, new habits, new dietary habits, new exercise habits, or at least double down on the ones they're currently doing, that 20% of patients essentially maintain their weight loss and one in three continue to lose weight. So it's not what you're being told. These blatantly incorrect pseudo facts that are being spread around the internet have got to go. And hopefully I will make sure I have all the links in here for you. Hopefully this has been somewhat eye-opening for you. And hopefully you will look at this with a little discretion because man, people are so emotionally fired up about this. I just cannot get behind 
trashing on an entire class of medications that are having profound and helpful impacts on people all over the world right now. I have never seen in my several decades in medicine, I have never seen anything that could be dosed when done correctly so low and so effectively address so many different health issues that a patient is having. And I am patient first. I am here to put the patient in front of me in the best situation that they can be in. And I will use every tool available to me. And I have a license to prescribe and I'm not afraid to use it when needed. I love peptides. I love that they heal. I love that they regenerate tissue. I love that they go in and do the job they need to do. And going back to just to close where I said earlier that these peptides increase insulin and people are having a fit about that. Part one of that is that it actually makes insulin receptors more sensitive. But part two is that it only induces insulin secretion in the body when it's needed, when insulin is needed to lower blood sugar. It's not like it's just causing the body to crank out insulin at all times. It helps the body respond better. It helps the pancreas actually respond better in real time to read the body and to say, hey, the signal is here. We have high glucose. We need some insulin on the scene to lower it. It's not like it's just sitting there cranking out insulin all day and causing people to go into a hyperinsulinemic state. It just helps the body respond properly when signals should be heard and they're not being heard in the type 2 diabetic or the obese state. It allows that whole cascade to go on correctly. And again, it's regenerative and healing to the entire process. So I will leave it at that. I have a four-part video series I would love for you guys to check out. It's drtina.com forward slash Ozempic Uncovered. I'll make sure to have the link in the show notes. I would absolutely love if you guys would check it out. Even if you hated everything I just said and, and this has made you really angry, go listen to it anyway, because we need facts over fear. I'm so tired of this new science since 2020 where people just scream louder than the other one and then they win and facts are just thrown out the window and science gets discarded. We really need to start taking a nuanced look at things. Nothing happens in a silo. Nothing is black and white as they want to make it out to be. And these peptides are helping a lot of people and I think have the potential to change the world if done correctly. So I will leave you with the free video training series and if you have any questions or you'd like to hear me talk more on this topic, email me podcast at drtina.com and I will be sure to check out your request. 